the past, I've honestly had two bad instances with Xylens power supplies, but it seems Xylens now have greatly improved on their quality. With today's gaming gold, 850 watt PSU, the brand is offering us gold efficiency and decent build quality and connectivity at under 89 euros over here in Europe. Yes, this is more of a European product. Sure, there have been made a few compromises as far as features are concerned, but at the end of the day, this is not a power supply that should be overlooked, especially not when going for tight budget builds. However, is it really safe and good enough? Or should you be spending 10 to 20 euros slash dollars more? As far as what comes included, pretty standard stuff meaning we are getting the PSU itself, its power cord, screws and a warranty extension card, along with a very important note, and that is a reminder not to connect your power-hungry graphics card with just a single cable harness, but instead it is recommended to split the power delivery into two harnesses, as you should be doing with every PSU out there actually. Right off the bat, I'll have to admit, in terms of aesthetics and overall build quality, Xylens has improved a lot since the last time I've owned one of their units. So I'm positively surprised. The PSU, given that it offers 850 watts, is kept fairly compact, but that's something many brands are doing nowadays. Still, what instantly caught my attention was the lack of full or even partial modularity. We are therefore looking at a permanently attached cable harness meaning none of it can be unplugged, which in certain cases can make the cable management job a fair bit harder. But then again, money needs to be saved somewhere when considering the price this PSU comes in at. It's just as obvious we are not dealing with one of the latest ATX 3.0 models, but instead just good old ATX 2.52. I was a little shocked at first when I noticed the input voltage on here. It only goes from a range of 200 to 240 volts and unlike most other power supplies out there does not support 100 volts and up. This means that this particular PSU can only be used in specific countries and regions that operate on the 230 volt power grid such as in Europe for instance. There's no automatic switching going on here and there's also no dedicated switch to take care of that. Well for us Europeans that's not really a big deal I guess. But then there's another thing I should point out. In order to save costs, Xylens have refrained from grabbing the costly official AD Plus certification for efficiency, meaning they cannot advertise their unit with that specific certification and logo. Although they are promising this power supply fully meets the AD Plus gold standard and should be offering an efficiency of up to 93%. I'll be conducting my own testing a bit later into the video. The Gaming Gold PSU is being cooled by their own in-house 120mm fan featuring a hydrodynamic bearing. The fan is constantly spinning even under light PSU loads. I can confirm that the fan at roughly 20% PSU load operates at about 10 decibels. 50% translates to about 17-18 decibels. At max, we should be looking at 36 decibels, which I didn't get to though, since I wasn't able to put enough load onto the unit. As so often, Xylens goes with a single plus 12 volt rail, providing nearly 71 amps. All protections are in place, and as far as the respective power connectors are concerned, I have some mixed feelings. We do receive two 8-pin CPU power connectors, but also only three pieces of 8-pin PCIe. Other brands usually are offering double the amount. They're also skimping on the number of SATA and Molex connectors with 6 and 3 respectively. The connectivity is sufficient, don't get me wrong, but given the fact we are dealing with an 850 watt power supply, it's a bit underwhelming. The cable length is decent actually, and all cables are of the type flat ribbon, therefore not sleeved. Let's now take a look at the internals of the Xylens Gaming Gold. At this point I'd like to warn you that opening up power supplies and touching any of the internal parts can cost you your life, be warned. Furthermore, I cannot be considered a professional when it comes to power supplies. Therefore, I'll only be able to state the obvious for you. I certainly tried my best to identify the platform that comes into play here today, basically what OEM is manufacturing it. 
Unfortunately, it appears I'm a bit rusty and sadly wasn't able to determine the exact OEM behind this unit. Nonetheless, everything seems to be fairly tidy and organized, which is a good sign. There's definitely DC to DC conversion going on for plus 3.3 and plus 5 volts. If it were missing, I wouldn't even consider such a PSU these days. When it comes to the choice of components or rather capacitors, I have to say there's a wild mix in here. On the primary side, we are looking at a single electrolytic cap by the respectable brand Elite based in Taiwan, rated at 400 volts and 560 microfarad. The cap is rated at a max of 105 degrees Celsius. Nice. Moving on to the secondary side, I was able to spot the following capacitors. Changsh, or rather Changxing from China, a couple ones by Elite, therefore from Taiwan, then ones with the branding CS, which I believe is part of the Elite lineup, if I'm not entirely mistaken, and I also spotted something by Eltec from Taiwan. In terms of solid capacitors, I discovered ones by FP Cap from Japan, and either ones by Evercon or Leilan, both of which are from Taiwan, or maybe even Toshin Kogyo from Japan. I'm not really sure on this one. But now let's move on to my basic testing and measurements, that is if those can even be considered as such. Starting with the 3.3, 5 and 12 volt rails at idle. Here the PSU is already offering us close to ideal values. The behavior should be a little more interesting when putting on some load. The 3.3 and 5 volt rails remain strong, but the 12 volt rail goes to show a slight deviation now although 12.15 volts is still totally fine. Now let's talk efficiency. As Xylans are stating, despite lacking any official 80 plus gold certification, today's gaming gold does in fact clearly position itself within the gold spectrum when comparing it against the measurements with other models. There's a minimal deviation, but hardly worth mentioning. To sum things up, what kind of compromises do we have to live with? First of all, we are limiting ourselves to a 230 volt grid only. You therefore won't be able to use this unit internationally. For some, that's something to keep in mind. For others, it doesn't matter at all. Things get a little messier and not so convenient when working with a fixed permanently attached cable harness. Modularity is not being offered here, which means you'll have to put a little more work and time into your cable management if you want everything to look nice and tidy. Also, Xylans apparently isn't very generous when it comes to the amount of power connectors. Competitors often offer a higher number. Other than that, the platform appears to be of decent quality, thus leads to an overall good impression. The Xylans Gaming Gold certainly wouldn't exactly be my first go-to choice, but within this price range, when working on a tight budget, it's worth considering. I do believe one can trust the quality here, and that's coming from me that has made bad experiences with two Xylans power supplies over 10 years ago. The quality certainly has improved noticeably here. But then again, you could argue, why not simply save money for just a little longer and at the end of the day just pay 10 to 20, maybe even 30 euros or dollars more for a PSU and then get all the modern features. In the end, it's a decision you have to make on your own. Other than that, the Xylans Gaming Gold, the 850 watt version of it, certainly makes a solid impression. With that said, thanks so much for watching and until the next one.